Hi guys, it's Audrey Rowdy Girl here. So I'm here with a video that um, a few people have requested, which is how to walk in heels. So it starts with the shoes that you buy and when you buy them. So first things first, um, I, there was an old adage for a really long time that you should wait until the end of the day when your feet are swollen to buy shoes. However, that is actually not the case. And the reason you don't want to do that is because more likely than not, your shoes can end up up to a full size larger than you actually need. So then when you go to put them on at a regular time, they don't fit, they're hard to walk in. And in your mind, you're thinking, yeah, but when they're swollen, like then all my feet will eventually fit in them. Not the case. Um, it depends on how much walking you did. So if you did just a little bit of walking and you went like up half a size, then, you know, when you're going to still be half a size big. If you did a ton of walking and your feet have gone from like to like, like Six Flags, like theme park, like Disneyland walking, you're going to have them elephant feet. And you do not want to try on shoes with your elephant feet. Those aren't your normal feet. So I'm going to show you a couple of different things and kind of show you the difference in between buying the shoe that fits and actually fits and will be comfortable and easy to walk in as we get into the walking portion and then the difference in between a shoe that doesn't fit and how to tell that it does not fit especially when we're talking about heels mostly heels all right guys here we go so the first issue with the shoe as you may see they look really really cute sassy and all that stuff but there's gapping in the back as you can see I can stick my finger in each side in the back of the heel um, and I'm able to as you can see, these shoes are really, really cute, quite sassy, quite sexy, but I'm able to stick my finger in the back of the heel, which means there's gapping. Um, I'm also able to stick my fingers in the front of the heel, again, gapping. So as you saw, you can walk, and I exaggerated a little bit um, just so you could really see that, but there's slippage. So that means when I'm walking, because the shoes do not actually fit, I may experience slippage and experiencing slippage in heels can be extremely embarrassing because then you might fall and you don't want to fall. So I wanted to show you some heels that actually fit and the better side of that. All right. So looking at it, the heel is snug up against my heel. So the heel of the boot was snug up against my heel, which makes it very comfortable and easy to walk in. My toes are not punching the front of the boot either. And I can't wait to be able to have more heels so I can do another video so I can show you um, in more detail and depth about doing this. But if you look, it's all about weight transfer. My preferred method is weight transfer. So transferring weight from side to side makes it a little bit easier to walk, especially when you have the heel, because having a heel just generally makes you a little bit more unstable. So if you transfer your weight from side to side, it gives you a little bit of time to anticipate that next step. Uh, the other uh, choice that you have or option is to do the crisscross. The other option you have is to do the crisscross. So some people like to kind of do a walk where they're kind of crisscrossing one foot in front of the other, as you can see demonstrated here on the side. Um, and that gives you a little bit of anticipation as well because you know, okay, I'm going to take this step and then I'm going to take this step and then I'm going to take this step. The more comfortable you get with it, the easier it is for you to just do the regular tr transfer of weight. And it's not really, it's one, it's kind of sexy. The weight transfer gives you like a little bit of hip movement, a little bit of sexiness, a little bit of sassiness. Um, and the cool thing about it is, as you can see, you could end up running in your heels and it's not a big deal. One of the great things about a platform shoe is that like I said, you don't have Barbie foot. Your foot is a little, like it's slightly slanted, but it is nowhere near where most stilettos are. So a lot of stilettos have your foot in this position, like, like this, and your toes are like this, and your foot's like this, and it's very difficult to walk in them, which is why I recommend always to start in platforms, especially when you're gonna actually do like a stiletto type heel. Get in platforms, they're gonna make your life a lot easier. 
do that weight transfer and practice at home. Don't be afraid to just kind of walk around in the mirror, practice a little bit, and don't get you don't have to get crazy with it. Just practice makes perfect. Um, so the more that you do this, the more comfortable you're going to feel. But like I said, my feet fit comfortably with and without socks and these boots. And that's the other thing with you when you're looking at boots. You want your feet to feel comfortable with and without socks. And I'm talking, you know, a little bit of a thicker sock sometimes. But yeah, you. The main thing is just getting the movement. And once you have that movement down, it's like anything else. So the last thing I'm going to show you is dancing. <laughs> dancing in heels. So this is going to be a lot of fun, and it, I think you're going to enjoy it. So as you may have noticed in, my, in the dancing, as I... Bleh, All right, so dancing in heels is super easy. The main thing is that you keep your movement in your hips, your upper body. Move your legs around a little bit. Don't move your feet. So if you're new to heels, you're new to wearing them, and you decide to wear them, you decide to go out dancing, notice that in the video here in the side that you're watching, I am not moving my feet a lot. I move once in a while, do a turn, dance a little bit to a turn, dance a little bit, but I'm keeping all of the movement in my body and not a lot of it in my feet. It's different when you're in tennis shoes, you can kick it, you can do whatever, but when you're in heels, you really want to keep your foot movement limited, especially when you're new to it. And even when you're an old hat, you really do want to keep your foot movement lim limited, limited, you really do want to keep your foot movement limited because that's going to A, keep your feet from feeling like death at the end of the night, but B, it's also going to keep you from falling and looking like a fool. And C, you're going to feel a lot more comfortable, especially when you're not comfortable wearing heels. So just keeping that movement mo mainly situated in your legs, and that's also going to build up your quads, girl, anyway, and your butt. So keeping that movement there is definitely going to help you out and keep you in a position where you look cute you're looking cute you're looking fly you're looking awesome looks like you know what you're doing looks like you've been wearing heels forever and you don't have to stress about it and you don't have to worry about doing any kind of complicated dance moves either yes all right guys so that's my short little tutorial on how to buy heels when to buy them how they should fit how to dance and i'll do a couple more of these i'll do another one too that's actually going to show the heels that i fit in heels that i don't and i'll actually choose a different pair mm. but i hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope it helped you out if you liked it go ahead and hit that thumbs up button and feel free to subscribe i love it i have so much fun when you with you guys i try to respond to every single one of you because i'm just amazed that there's even that many of you who watch any of my videos at all so thank you to all of you who've been hanging out with rowdy girl fam all right guys until next time never spend time building someone up who only wants to tear you down peace out Blessed be y'all. So, one of the things um, I, that people have requested, 